Welcome back to the Friday Front Bar, everybody here in the magnificent All Nations yes. Hotel. Thanks to the Brewery Fresh Carlton Draft. The man oh, wow. with the wandering hands over there is not Sam Peng sitting next to Mick Malloy. It is, in fact, Chaz Lichardello. Lovely. You got my name right. Well, you I'm... haven't drunk enough of that. No, no. Well, I might have one of those. <laughs> Welcome to the Friday Front Bar, great man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. May I, uh, I know you're a big Bulldogs man, but I what's your, your football bona fides? Did you play a bit as, uh, as a young lad? I, I have played with women before. Right. Uh, that's yeah. kind of my entire experience. Co-ed footy, where you couldn't tackle. Well, you fit in fine at Carlton. Uh, so. You know you're doing badly when people make that joke about you and not Jack Watts. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know you're really struggling. Yeah. 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 It's been a change in the pecking order. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's yeah. happening to your footy club? You have, the, you have that unbelievable win against the Sydney Swans where everybody's lauding it. Murph's coming out saying the greatest win I've ever been involved in. You have won another game since. What the hell is going on? Everyone knows the season ends in round five. Right, okay. Yeah. Everyone knows that. <laughs> get to the biggest story of the year so far involving the sacking of Mick Malthouse, which occurred after an interview he did on your show mm -hmm. on SEN. And I can't believe he got sacked on the basis of... I can't believe anyone was listening. <laughs> <laughs> he probably thought he was going to get away with those comments because what are the chances of anyone hearing anything no, no, on his he, show? He could have been listening to a Nickelback song if he hadn't been listening to oh, Triple M at the time. Oh, anyway, oh, yeah, no. We were sitting in there with you know Tim and Gazy, and we were trying to think of what he'd be like coming on. You know, everything's happened in Carlton, yes. and one minute in, you knew that this was going to be Mick off tap, and it was just one uh, of those sort of jaw droppers after another. And in the end, you know, history will reveal that that was the last interview he did before the club pulled the pulled the pin. And he was going, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we <it was> screwed <laughs> him over, yeah. yeah. Another scalp because you did the same to Scotty Waters, did you not? Pat well, St Kilda, the last yeah. interview he did was on, on yeah. your show. No, that's true. It's funny you say that. That's true. It's funny you say because there wasn't You're a coach any, killer. But it yeah. wasn't any of that. What's like, wrong with you? You don't get any of that sense of, oh, how good was it? You, you know that it's been an you know, a bloody electric interview. But you don't take any joy out of the fact that... Man, well, you don't. We do. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> that was the first coach of the year to go. It's always interesting to see who is. No surprises there. Well, who was the earliest? Can you, what's the earliest a coach has ever been sacked? Pre-season. Pre-season? Yeah, pre-season. Really? Yeah. There's a Wayne Schimmelbush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're telling, telling me Carlton didn't even win that contest? They <laughs> 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 were your club. <laughs> up until, no. up until the, uh, the previous one, the earliest was Terry Wheeler at your yeah, club so back in about round 93, 94. Was that round two? It was early yeah. in the season. Yeah, he got old Squirrel Wheeler. He got the fleet. I should wait till round five. I told you, that's the season. <laughs> <laughs> round five. Right. Yeah. So yeah. when was the okay. writing on the wall, do you oh, think, for me? For me, I reckon... You didn't actually know he was gone until the actual day he was going. Nothing to do with this yeah, interview. Yeah. It's when uh, he got the kiss of death. All I know is that Mick Malthouse has an extraordinary record. Uh, he's the Wayne Bennett, I guess, of Aussie rules coaching. Absolutely <laughs> extraordinary record. Now, occasionally even the best of us in whatever field uh, have, uh, have downs as well as ups. And uh, my instinct is that um, Mick Malthouse should be given a chance to uh, bring his team back to the success that I'm sure he's capable of coaching it to. So you have to go. You have to yeah, go yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. You have to go. You know, you know what that is? That's another captain's call. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> another captain's yeah. call. Do you know what? He'll probably give him a knighthood now. <laughs> Look, it's fun for us to muck around with, but what about for the rank and file? What about no, for Carlton, yeah. who've endured... Let's say, I have to say, I back for one of the worst performed teams in the last 30 years, but I can't remember a time where we were as bad <laughs> as this. Let's cross out to Princess Park and just take the temperature <laughs> from the local fan base there. Uh, I can show you a message on my phone for a person that isn't a Carlton supporter and he doesn't follow footy. I can read it out. Go the Blues destroyed Mick. <laughs> That's how Hal, has been a legend coach for 30 years. His name is in the gutter. Go the Blues. This is how you show loyalty to a guy. Four weeks before, he could break his record. This is how you show loyalty to the supporters and non-supporters. Mate, this club's got a fold in four years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's actually one of their board members. <laughs> <laughs> who's come straight from a meeting where they're talking about that. You are right, though, about the victims. There are so many victims in this. And, yeah, it, uh, like, for instance, 
my team, the dogs. Who are we going to trade our duds to this year? <laughs> <laughs> we have so many duds. And all this is gone. We're, we're, the, we're the butt of jokes for Western Bulldogs supporters and <laughs> Richmond supporters are actually feeling sorry for us. It yes. actually doesn't get any longer. Yes. yes, it, it doesn't get any longer than me, to be honest. Uh, it's fun to watch. It no, it's really nothing funny about it. Is, it is fantastic. I'm not sure if you saw Chris Judd walk around the car park. He was in the complete day. It was aimless, it was just, wasn't it? Here he is, leaving training. And if you ever want to know where your car is, now would be the time. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Maybe he's looking for the hovercraft. <laughs> this is totally symptomatic of the Mick Moldhouse game plan. <laughs> <laughs> going straight to the boundary. You've got no idea where he's going. <laughs> now, the other guy I feel sorry for there is Daisy Thomas, who oh, followed yeah. Mick to the club. And if anyone was taking it hard at Carlton this week, it was Daisy. Have a look at him here. As if his day isn't bad enough, he's just found out that Mick Moldhouse, his mentor, is leaving the club. Now he gets back to his car. That's not his. So he goes, smart movies. <laughs> <laughs> here he is. Look, he's got, he's got a ticket. He's been there and he's got a ticket. Apparently this is going on all the time at the Carlton at Princess Park. They, there's two-hour parks and they go into train... That's why they're shit house. That's, that's why they, they can't concentrate because they need on a training. Because they're, they're trying to make the ball going, I think I'm getting a ticket. What's <laughs> <laughs> going Mick, on over Mick, there? I'm just going to go move me car. <laughs> I'm just well, gonna... that's, not, that's not conducive to good footy. No, no, no. no. Both got to, uh, I think you've buried the lead here. You're saying Carlton trained for more than two hours? <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing See? accusation. See? Another, another dig in the ribs from a Western yeah. Bulldog supporter. Well, I'll tell you, you won one flag and you loaned the boots in. Yeah. Tough for Daisy, and look, he's going to miss this a lot too because uh, we've all got used to these pitches. This is before the game. The sad thing for Daisy is that's the only kick he ever got a car. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I think he's so upset. You know who, who is emotional and I feel very sorry for? And that's the Carlton rank and file. Let's go back and have a look. If I ever have kids in the future, if they choose to follow Carlton, they can, but I will never, ever follow Carlton ever again to the day I die. We don't even have 40,000 members. How are we going to survive? What's Bill Shorten have to do with this today? Mate, you don't want Bill Shorten involved. Trust me. I love how the Carlton rank and is now one guy. <laughs> that, is, that, that is the entire membership base. Right there. Can we go back to your uh, game-changing interview? because <laughs> on SCN. And this is what I... On SEN, this, you, yeah. well done. I, what I need to know here is... Who is going to be perceived a good guy out of this fallout? Because I can't work out whether Moldhouse is a good guy or whether Carlton is a good guy. He threw a few pies on your show. No, and this is, you know, the agree. stuff about Stephen Trigg is a classic example. Yeah, no, it was, a great, it was I mean, an absolute grenade. No, yeah. Have a listen to this exchange on SEN. I'd still love to have uh, Betts. Betts is the most classical one because he's a, he's a goal kicker. But... You know, Stephen assured us, Stephen Trigg assured us when he arrived, you don't don't take it too personally. He said, uh, we, being Adelaide, had him stitched up 18 months out. Can you have a hand in that graphic? <laughs> I can barely see. It's very large hand. Barely see Mick Rollout. In my opinion, that was a bloke who said, if I'm going down, I'm taking someone with me. Yeah, that's yeah. what that was. That's I'm, what I'm, it was. I'm taking it with it me. It was like, psh. Boof. Yeah, it was. It was. See you, Carl. It was. It was. Now, who knows where, who knows where that is. It's going to take someone, though. Trigg's a good guy to take. I mean, the thing about this from Adelaide Crow's point of view, he gets them investigated when they gain a player in bets, when they lose a player in bets. <laughs> now, what they do. Well done, Carlton. Great yeah. hire. Yeah. You, know, you, know who we need to get, you know, know who we need to get on the case here? The FIFA Ethics Committee. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour, mon ami. Welcome to another edition of Friday Wine Bar. Coming to you from the south of France in the small town called St. Remy de Provence. Sam Pang, Robert Walls. Good to see you again, Walls. Nice to see you, Sam. A big round of football coming up. Round nine kicks off tonight. Carlton taking on Sydney. Your tip? I think Sydney at home. Too strong. Richmond and Essendon clash tomorrow night. It's uh, Saturday night. Yes, well, I think that the Tigers' last two weeks have been really good. I think they'll win three in a row. And on Sunday, two teams in form. Collingwood taking on the Kangaroos. Your uh, thoughts? Yeah, well, I like Collingwood. I think Collingwood's young players are starting to show everybody just how good they can be. Well, there you go. That wraps it up for another edition of Friday Wine Bar. Where are we up to next week, Wolsey? Well, you've got your choice, Sam. Uh, would you like to go to Aix-en-Provence, which is 50 minutes down the road, or we can go a little bit further to Marseille? Let's go to both of them. <laughs> Thanks for watching Friday Wine Bar. We'll be back next week. Until then, au revoir. <laughs> oh, fantastic, oh, Sam, of course.
over there with Wolsey, who's on a little bit of a French sojourn. He, he will be could have at least done some walking into the wind for us. <laughs> oh, now, do you think the Swans are worried? Because normally after they sack a coach, her club comes out pretty strong. Do you reckon the Swans are... Trembling. <laughs> it'll, it'll work. In their birds. No. No, Juddy. No. He's not going no, up, Gibbs, which is fine. surprising, which means no one will get his jumper. Look at last week. This is Guthrie swap shirts afterwards. I've never seen Juddy so happy to have a Geelong jumper in his hands. Look at that. You can have my Carlton jumper. I never want to see it again. Good on Juddy for taking it. Mind you, I did find this on eBay earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to have a tweet. Yeah, obviously meant a lot. Right. I thought it was nice. I thought it was nice. I, 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 in fact, when I was when I first started watching AFL, I used to have my own fantasies about that kind of thing. In fact, I, I always wanted to swap with Lance Whitnell, his jumper, and then live in it. So I could beat <laughs> the property crisis. Will there be a bigger margin, Sydney v Carlton or Hawthorne v Gold Coast? Which will be the big blowout this week? Definitely Hawthorne the rebound. But the good news for Gold Coast, though, is at least they're going to be so drunk they won't remember. <laughs> so, that's, that's good news for the kids there. While we're talking the Hawks, yeah. I, uh, I saw something interesting on the telly the other day. It was, uh, it was a discovery with Langford, and have a look, he's uh, looking great. He's obviously a barista, and here he is decorating a coffee. Oh, mm -hmm. gee. Message in that, but... <laughs> it's just a picture of Jeff Kennett, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> if you do go to that cafe, don't order a long black. <laughs> you blokes, you're up against uh, the, the, the emerging might uh, and power of the GWS yeah. boys. Yeah, now, this will be a fast game. These are two yeah. young sides, they're going to go yeah. like the clappers. What's yeah. your take well look we've been the dogs support has been talking about this for you know six months we've, been, we've had this, yes. this one circled and so we're just so happy that we're now playing like crap when we get there <laughs> i mean ace cordy he couldn't he couldn't the door and mumford he couldn't rock against mumford and sons so like so, so we're going in we're going, we're going in down but at least Griffin sees he's starting yep. to play well. Yeah. Look at that. It's working That's out well for the doggies. There's Ryan Griffin. He's really struggling up at the Giants. But you had to give away a fair bit to get Tom Boyd. Yep. And, and Tom he. Boyd's going well. It's his look, best stat for look, the day. Look, <laughs> he's putting on a jacket. To, to be fair, to be fair, I know it doesn't look good there, but the way he puts on the red vest, he's still yeah. adding more than Liam Jones did. <laughs> like, like, when we used to throw the red vest to him, he'd fumble it. He dropped the vest. <laughs> so it is an improvement. Probably the, the highlight one. of the round is yeah. Dustin Fletcher's 400. Yeah. I mean, and on dream time, huge night that's getting bigger every year. I love uh, the Indigenous uh, round. I love the fact that it's an Indigenous round and yet the centrepiece of it is an ageing white man. <laughs> well, <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair, he is 40,000 years old, so it seems appropriate. <laughs> 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 it seems no, reasonable. Yeah, indeed. None of it is dream time the or nap time. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to talk seriously about Dustin Tetris for a second, the thing which I always associate with him, apart from the age, is the talk. This is one of my favourites. That is a big, big Tour. And like, and just because of that, like now every time Dustin Fletcher is 70 or 80 metres out from goal, whenever <laughs> Essendon play, they all start going, they start murmuring, is he going to kick it? Is he going to kick it? And it's very similar actually at the dogs. And when Dalhouse is 20 metres out, <laughs> everyone's going, do you think he can kick it? Do you think he can make the distance? It's just very exciting, you know? Hey, thank you for helping us out today. Pleasure. You've been fantastic. It's been a great week. For everyone apart mm. from Carlton, and I do genuinely feel sorry for them, um, as I said, especially the rank oh, and file. Not, we, <laughs> once more, we just oh, hear yeah. some of the heartache. You sacked Redden, they sacked Pagan, now they sacked Moales. Players don't want to come here, so why would a coach want to come here? Who's going to be the coach that's going to take over? Well, he was our messiah. Who's going to be the coach? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> There it is. So that man's pain. I hope it eases soon. Uh, Chaz, thanks for coming along. That's it again for Friday Fun Bar here at the All Nations Hotel. Thanks to the Brewery Fresh Carlton Run.